to your lordships may just recall and that in a previous order which was passed by this court the constitution bench <laughs> has held that no other court should entertain petitions etc so that's one order which i wanted to draw attention to mm -hmm. and all applications and petitions should be filed in this court alone that's one order the other order is when separate writ petitions came to be filed because of this direction which was passed by this court what your lordships thereafter ordered is that we are disposing of the writ petitions but we are granting liberty to each of the writ petitioners to file an inter intervention application to assist the court and the constitution bench so those writ petitions were also closed allowing us to approach this court because probably you didn't want a multitude of writ petitions to be filed mm -hmm. and that is the status so i i mean i, I we are entirely in the court's hands but i thought it may be useful to go through these orders first and thereafter of course as your lordship suggests proceed uh, sequentially or whatever manner the court considers appropriate so i was just seeking permission of the court if you would allow me to place these orders as they evolve so that we at least know the orders which have been passed by this court coming to this moment that is my only request mr sham diwan yes. you also discussed very well very before well. coming right yes yes now if the issue has really become academic yes. there is no point in wasting the judge the time of five judges yes right now we feel having regard to the passage of time yeah if there is any individual grievance in any separate writ petition we will tackle them yes but otherwise all these issues should be should be we will take it up at it, this stage it's not it's academic not but it, it won't be academic because as, as i'm now just on the last point which you correctly observe huh. if there are individual issues huh. the individual issues challenge hmm. will be at different levels Yes. they will be at the challenge that look this particular statute is unconstitutional mm. assuming it is constitutional mm. the action under the statutes is for whatever reason disproportionate failing constitutional test mm. so as your lordship is common uh, is aware mm. our challenges are layered they are at different levels mm. so there is an attack on the validity mm. assuming the validity as your lordship correctly hold mm. one thing i might just point out I, i mean it's just maybe of some interest because mr chidambaram has already indicated that to the court yes as far as the 77 78 demonetization mm. is concerned mm. and we have placed that in the compilation mm. that decision eventually came in 1996 by a constitution bench mm. which examined thread by the statute mm. and thereafter went into the individual grievances and pronounced on the individual grievances by the constitution bench itself mm. so that judgment also we have placed in the compilation so i mean not that that is binding on your lordships in the sense but that's an indication as to how a previous constitution bench tackling an issue similar to this did proceed in the matter they retained the matter and they eventually decided it so because i am only speaking now from the perspective of the individual whom i represent mm. we had filed a writ petition mm. this court said that please file an intervention in this lead case of vivek sharma mm. so we with that the petition was disposed of we availed that liberty and we have come here by way of an application etc that mr sham diwan yes. with due respect yes that was a time perhaps that order was necessary yes me now everything has settled well, down well let me yeah. answer that yeah yes 1978 demonetization mm. was by a separate legislation of parliament no, ordinance on use them the 1978 demonetization mm. was by a separate law of parliament ordinance followed by an act mm. now earlier in 1948 or so there was another demonetization mm. by a separate act of parliament today they have used the banking uh, the reserve bank of india sections 24 and 26 mm. now whether a demonetization of this kind we will show it is really not demonetization it is new notes for old it is really not demonetization in the sense that any currency is declared legal tender whether a demonetization of this kind requires a separate law debated in parliament ordinance of course but debated in parliament and then parliament could have modified it can you invoke 24 and 26 that's not academy that is a live issue and tomorrow if this goes unchallenged or unadjudicated they can invoke 24 and 26 today again whereas the two previous examples of demonetization were by separate act of parliament and my submission will be this kind of demonetization requires a separate act of parliament and 24 and 26 does not give you that power